we go to them with a bid we waste two months and then we end up signing them towards the two end months? of the transfer window yeah bro, bro we wasted two years on jaden sancho two <laughs> years we had a bid we've taken this opportunity to you know kick a bet out also yeah. i told myself not this season yeah. not this season <laughs> but that's just me hiding my true beliefs and 21 might just be coming man hello guys and welcome back to another episode of the football by dummies podcast i'm hamza and i'm joined by my friend and dear partner in my fbd endeavor yashas hi guys hello again and if you look closely you will notice that we've got a person missing and that person has been very integral to our fbd till this date but you see we've planned on taking uh, this opportunity and grabbing it with both our hands and talking about manchester mm-hmm. united today because that person yeah, would never you know, ever let that's us something talk about we it. can't do with that better <laughs> yeah. that person like that guy puts it puts us down man <laughs> We should just kick him. But yeah, you know, podcast, like just bro. just like there's been a lot of changes happening at United, you know, at at every single level. I think you know we at Abiri have taken this opportunity to you know kick a bet out also. <laughs> yeah. So. Buy that. Buy that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, guys, we're kidding. We're waiting on him, and hopefully he joins us again yeah, yeah, next sure, weekend. Sure. Also, guys, before we start, just want to tell all of you guys that we we're extremely sorry for not being available, neither on Insta nor on YouTube for the last month or so. we were all on a break of sorts but hopefully from today onwards and for the upcoming season we'll be uploading every week isn't that right yashas that's right that's right definitely and if we don't I mean, please hold yashas accountable <laughs> <laughs> i mean I, I, things are looking kind of positive for us so i'm you know hoping that every week we can actually as united fans especially we can come every week and start recording cuz things are looking really positive what do you make of this uh, the changes everything that has been happening around united and so bro it's so good dude it's so good we're acting like a club again it's it's ridiculous you I know i swear dude like, like, like they've got you know united acting like a proper club before gta 6 <laughs> you know like after so long there are no rumors there there is yeah. no news of infighting or this guy doesn't like this guy this guy wants to go out nothing just just news like bulletin points yeah. right this guy is going this is the bid he's signing he's being unveiled pretty he may straight not forward like exactly, pretty straight bro. forward it's so nice to see it's so nice to see you just look what back at last yeah. season uh, say for example when we were bidding for mason mount and we were yeah. i think going in with a 30 40 million bid and they were like saying no and then again there was a whole lot of negotiations going on which mm. eventually united always loses so it's very yes. refreshing to see us coming out on the other side of negotiations and winning them yeah. for example even a man lenny euro bro, bro dude what a signing dude. like what I'm sorry. a classy signing we've jumped topics now we've landed right at lenny euro but you got to tell me did you watch the preseason game against I the did, rangers i did the one against rangers definitely yeah. i did watch that game it what was him, like man? what a signing dude what a sign he's 18 but he doesn't play like an 18 year old dude. it's like they signed uh, so i don't know if you know if you guys united fans um, especially if you So well, I think this is back in 2012 when we wanted to sign Rafael Varane. Yeah. And he missed out to Real Madrid dude. Like, we we finally so, have like, I, somebody deep down I was like no man this is going to be and the, the same repeat of 12, 2012 again. Euro goes to Madrid and he missed out on a young promising like you know talent. But dude, what a talent dude. If you saw that I, game he reads the game so well. He's physical, he's fast, he's tall. Dude in, I think he he is the talent when it comes to center backs uh, below yeah. 21 and it was very surprising very surprising to me that we actually managed to get him i knew we went in very strong but every mm-hmm. player who's always had a sight set on real madrid eventually goes only to real madrid yeah. nobody else can entertain him man so it's it's kind of mind boggling that we actually uh, got the guy and he, we convinced him to join to manchester united but again so coming back to the game against rangers Dude, I yeah. was pleasantly surprised. So everybody over here knows we are fake football fans. <laughs> we don't <laughs> follow all the leagues. We just sit and watch our Premier League. But dude, Lenny Euro is a good player, man. I didn't expect him to be yeah. so calm on the ball. Of course, Rangers are not a great team, and and they didn't show a lot. And it was just a preseason game. But I could genuinely see him developing into a world class player, maybe in two three years time. And dude, imagine definitely, definitely. And dude, when you when you think of centre backs, when you think of young centre backs, you say mm. uh, Branthwaite, right? Everybody says he's a young, up and coming centre back. Dude, he's twenty yeah. two, I think, turning twenty three. Yeah, twenty one, twenty two. I think he he's not. Young. I mean, he is young per se, but uh, for a, for like a if you compare back, him to Euro, Euro's in Euro's eighteen. Exactly, 18, dude, exactly, dude. So, so there's Euro turns, he has four years on him, dude. Exactly, bro. So Euro finishes his contract and then becomes yeah. a new up and coming young centre back because you'd never exactly. see. Uh, center backs with this maturity at such a young age 
maybe mm-hmm. this guy and the barcelona kid what's his name pau cubresi from not uh, yeah, correct me from that yeah, that's I, I think how you you're right i think you're right i think yeah, these two are normal that we don't get to see and i'm i'm actually kind of glad that you know we didn't go for prathvik because um, since you know i mean after sir alex retired it's just been the same story for us if we go in for a signing he's valued at what like 30 40 million at best and the club holds us you know at you know like we end up paying whatever they demand yeah. 70 80 million for a player who's actually worth 30 million we saw that with antony we saw we saw that with you know uh, paul pogba or a lot of other players even though they i'm not saying they're not good talents i'm not saying i'm not saying that you know they don't have the potential definitely they might they might have it they might not have it but uh, we always end up overpaying or you know playing by the terms of the clubs and that that's exactly what everton tried to do with us when it came to brathwaite also and i'm so glad i'm so glad we didn't end up going and paying going and paying 70 million for him dude dude absolutely like i saw him last i don't know i don't know what you made made of him last season last season i found him to be okay like nothing special nothing you know extraordinary that you know you go and play pay 70 million for a player of his qualities mm-hmm. dude everton was just trying to do what lester did to us with harry maguire yeah. <laughs> and also you know when you mention that we yeah. always end up paying what the other club demands you missed out on a lot of steps in the middle we go to them with a bid we waste two months and then we end up signing them towards the two end months? of the transfer window yeah bro, bro we wasted two years on jaden sancho two years <laughs> <laughs> and look at the look guy at we got dude. dude how how is this man performing so well when he goes to dortmund and then when yeah, he comes back to united back. he plays but like, but then but then like, you know surprisingly in the preseason game he was pretty good like i, I kind of liked uh, what i saw dude. and i'm hoping that he can build on from there and kind of replicate but uh, yashas who was the best winger on the pitch bro i mean amar definitely amar think of it this way sancho hmm. played in the finals of the ucl last season yeah and for united he isn't even the best winger on the pitch in a b string team against rangers bro what the hell bro mm. i don't think there's no any excuse for that performance of course it was better than what we've been used to seeing of sancho yeah. in a united shirt but i don't think so man. i don't think he should stay Wait, what do you make of that what do you make of that do you think the future i mean it's over? kind of debatable i mean i honestly i would really want you know now that you know eric ten hag and he has kind of sorted the differences out and uh, you know put everything behind them i'm really hoping that we can actually get the player that uh, sancho was at dortmund I mean the player that we actually paid what 60 70 million for um, because if we sell him honestly you're not going to get more than 30 million for him and that's that's a fact 30 million is the best and PSG uh, as a matter of fact PSG are actually interested and uh, have you know contacted the player and they're willing yeah. to pay about 30 million for him I so that's all you're going to get for him so it's going to be a loss for us but I'm kind of hoping that you know he stays he replicates that form because I don't expect a lot from um, Marcus Rashford, obviously, on to be honest. Oh, dude! Did you? I, 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 do, I, I know we have a difference on that. I know we have a difference on Rashford, but I don't expect a lot from him. Ouch! Yeah, ouch, man! Season. Ouch! But whereas yeah. Sancho is con- is considered as a great player by many in European football, and I think all of those would have been hovering around him like a vulture with his feud yeah. going on with Eric Ten Hag. So I think it's a lovely 5D chess move by mm. Ineos Group and everybody else that they've hired to come in and make good footballing decisions. Yeah. to let it out publicly that the feud is over and i think that was the reason why jaden sancho started against rangers to show everybody mm, that he's going to yeah, stay here yeah. he's a united player so now if you mm. want him you give us money otherwise he's not going so <laughs> yeah I, I, mean, i don't know man yeah actually you know uh, ineos have been pretty smart when it comes to all of these things like even with the brathwaite thing that's what this is where i read somewhere that um, uh, when everton were demanding whatever their fee they wanted for brathwaite united actually went ahead and said you know what and they're not going to pay that much and immediately made it uh, clear to public that you know we are interested in any euro so they were yeah. in the hope that you know everton would drop their price tag in desperation because everton uh, actually needed to sell a player because of financial fair play and uh, they were in the hope that you know they drop the price tag didn't work out for us and uh, didn't work out for them didn't work out for us end of the day we got euro so it kind of worked out well for us and eventually for everton also i think they sold uh, amro onana onana to, to aston, aston villa yeah so Madness, yeah, so dude, fifty million. Said that way. Yeah. Yeah. Just He's a good player, back. young, good player again. Very true, very true. Yeah. Okay, so Asha, but just before we get into the Ineos structure, just for our viewers, I think it would be best if we tell them who all are the new recruits that Ineos have brought to this club uh, to make everything tick behind the scenes better and make a good environment for the players and for the manager to thrive. So I think, yeah. if if I'm not wrong, please correct me. Please feel free to correct me. Ineos. 
came with of course Sir Jim Ratcliffe the owner and he brought in two very important people right alongside him which was yeah. Sir Dave Brailsworth and also John Claude Blanc so these yeah. two guys are have been part of an Ineos group for a long time and their role in Manchester United was at least for Sir Dave Brailsworth was just to form a third person outer perspective opinion on everything that is happening on any decision that's taken and to yeah. also play the devil's advocate uh, for any decision that everybody else is deciding on and mm-hmm. a big example of that was the keeping of Eric Ten Hag so Eric yeah, Ten Hag definitely. according to all the other people that they had hired they had thought that probably Eric Ten Hag would not be a great this fit best. at Manchester United yeah. yeah and that it would be better for us to let him go but sir dave brailsworth played the devil's advocate and mm-hmm. made sure that he brought about the fa cup victory and the way we won the game all the young players that came through and all the points that we gave to all of you in an episode that we had made earlier this year please check it out guys if you want to we were the soothsayers we made sure we yeah, we'll drop we'll drop the link for it below yeah. Yeah. we'll check it out so so i think that that's what sir dave uh, sir dave brailsworth's role is oh man his name yeah. is a tongue twister man <laughs> but yeah so, so that was a good show good show by them and yeah. apart from that within manchester united they've gone and appointed a couple of people yes yeah, yeah there's about four of four or five players it. i think they've appointed i mean at this point i've lost track of who all they've appointed but uh, sir dan ashworth he they've got they've got from newcastle we paid i think a very small fee to get him from newcastle but uh, i think getting him as our sporting director was one of the best decisions that we've made in a long time uh, at this club Absolutely. you know and honestly uh, a lot of people you know a lot of people say that you know getting good players is i mean this is how people see it generally you know where people just understand just normally watching football would see it as oh you know we've got this star player we've got that star player this player is good this player is talented this player is promising but more than that it's having the right structure at the back at the top sorry you know that's more important and that's more important to a long term success and you know we've kind of got that right now we've got the right people behind it so dan ashworth he's done a brilliant job at brighton at uh, newcastle also we've seen the number of players that he's the the near the quality of the players that he's got in you know at brighton and newcastle like if you saw brighton brighton is not a club that like to spend a lot or do end up spending a lot and the players that he got that he's got in that budget we've all gone on and see you know we've gone on to see that you know how much brighton have eventually sold them for and even mm-hmm. newcastle like newcastle okay they have a bigger budget obviously owned by saudi so they have a bigger budget but even at newcastle he's gone on you know whatever pri- you know budget that they have he's gone and brought quality players in that budget and i'm and united we've seen that you know we've got two fantastic young promising players in lenny oro and um, joshua joshua zoxi Dude, absolutely, yeah. I completely agree with you, and I think it's about time that Manchester United start making some smart signings, where yeah. we lower the age profile of the players that we're bringing into this club. We bring in mm-hmm. more hunger, more qualities in those players, and also make sure that they want to prove themselves and play for this club, and not yeah. come here just for a good payday or just for a retirement. So it's it's great to see Dan Ashworth come at the helm of this club. But there are also a couple of other people that we've pinched around from clubs here and there. We've got Omar Barada, who we've taken in from our uh, lovely neighbours, Manchester City. <laughs> we've got Jason Wilcox. Do you know where Jason Wilcox has come from? I am not really sure. Is he City again? No, actually, no, even no. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's what I was asking. I thought maybe South. If you, if you guys, I, if you guys do know it, if any United fan watching this, if you do know it, let us know in the comments below. If you know yes. where Jason Wilcox has come from. Yes, guys, so, yeah. please do. And also, this guy. you mentioned earlier i think when we were speaking uh, christopher vivel so christopher vivel was uh, if i'm not wrong a te- head of recruitment or technical director at chelsea and he was there for a brief period a very short time over there but again we got him over here he's come for a, as an interim role a very short 6 months role if i'm not wrong but again i think it's a good move by us you know because it's because eventually we're looking to get someone else to replace him and for his qualities i think he would be a fantastic addition to the you know management or people to guide them to absolutely and i think even though both of us are completely aware that no professional game has been kicked off yet for the new season mm-hmm. by manchester united and even though we want to hide our excitement at least i for one i'm really starting to get excited after seeing all the developments <laughs> behind the scenes i really am i told myself not this season Yeah. Not this season. Temper your expectation. If you guys ask me for my prediction, I would say top four. But that's just me hiding my true beliefs. And twenty one might just be coming, man. 
<laughs> no, I'm not going I'm not going to go that far dude like I'm not going to that delusional but uh, I think top 4 is achievable honestly top 4 is achievable especially with the players that they're being linked to um, you know the quality as well as the age group I think it's achievable Yeah bro I I I think one more center back either Dilit or uh, Branthwaite as a starting mm, right center back Maybe yeah maybe maybe and uh, of course a defensive midfielder to cover yeah, definitely. for definitely probably Gassi, another you know? midfielder also in that and Yeah, it should be good. Yeah, I think exactly. I think these two positions, if we get, we should be sorted. Yeah, let's also see. The, hopefully, you know, hopefully they act fast, like they've been acting in the last couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Ogarte is the next player that we're after. Let's see. Yeah. Now, PSG. And, and you know, it's me. it's not like we're stuck on one player. Like Ogarte, if I don't know if you've read it recently, Ogarte, there's been some, uh, there's been a roadblock with PSG because yeah. PSG want to go and buy Oshiman, Victor Oshiman, as well as uh, Juan Neves from PSG. Right. Uh, from sorry, oh, from Benfica. Uh, Juan Neves from Benfica. Yeah, and obviously Benfica are demanding a, are demanding quite a high fee for him. So uh, PSG are hoping that you know they can get like a sixty seventy million you know fee from United for Garte, so that they can put that kind of money into uh, getting Juan Neves. Mm-hmm. And that's where that's what the figure they're holding at, and they're not ready to come down on that. So United immediately, I don't know if you've read recently, we've switched over to two or three other targets. Yeah. Uh, there's one uh, player called Fofana from Monaco, if I'm not wrong. That's so right. We've been linked to him. He's been linked to AC Milan, and he's being valued at about twenty twenty five million. So that's pretty smart. Even even with um, uh, Amrabat, if you read about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So United have uh, denied you know to pay the fee what Florentina want, and they said if you want to negotiate, we'll negotiate with you, but that's not the fee that we're going to pay. Yeah. So which is pretty smart. I mean, absolutely. And we also after that uh, kid from Colombia, Richard Rios was his name. Probably, yeah, Richard Rios. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, he's had a good. So, uh, he's had a good, you know, Copa America. Copa America. So But let's see. Let's see how it works out for us. When was the last time you saw United negotiate with multiple targets at the same time, dude? No. <laughs> I swear, man. I I have just been traumatized so badly by this uh, yeah. a Glazers regime where we've been running after De Jong for two months, <laughs> and ultimately just hearing him say, "Bro, I never wanted to come to your club," and going and buying Casemiro for seventy five million. Dude, that's just horrendous yeah, kind of business, really bro. And I'm, I know you know, I'm hopefully we don't see that shit. Again. Sorry, <laughs> I was saying hopefully we don't see. We're not going to get to see that kind of you know shit again. Yeah, yeah, bro. I, I really, genuinely, genuinely hope so. Yeah. To share, like, subscribe, and yeah. cheers. Bye. Yes, please, guys. Bye, bye. Take care.